Good morning. Hope you're all doing it, doing great this morning. Um, it's great to be here, and I'm glad to see everybody here. I've seen a couple of new faces that I hope to I hope to come and meet y'all before you leave today. Um, and it's great having guests here. Um, grateful for this opportunity. I'm grateful for this time that we can gather together to, to worship God. And that is going to be the focus of today's lesson. Today's focus is going to be a lot on, on what it means to worship and what it means maybe to not worship. Um, I, I, we have a little, I don't know if it's quite a tradition because we're, we're not perfectly regular at it, but most Thursday afternoons I will take Jasper and we will walk to the, to the library and we'll get our four or five books for the week. And um, last week we found a book that is called Birthday Monsters. Uh, Jasper's birthday is coming up at the beginning of August, so I thought, perfect time. Let's get him a couple books about birthdays. So we got this book called Birthday Monsters. Uh, really little, it's a little kid's book. It's a very simple little kid's book. And it's all about this guy. It's his birthday, and then a bunch of monsters come, and they, they invade his home on his birthday. So the monsters come in, and they uh, take all his presents, and they eat his cake, and they trash the house, and then they leave, and it's a big mess. And that happens on this guy's birthday, you know? It's supposed to be his birthday. It's a day that's supposed to be dedicated to him, all about him. And yet these monsters come in and they make the day all about them instead. And I, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is sometimes we do this with worship. Worship is about God. Uh, we, we are here to celebrate him. It is his day. Um, every day is his day, but especially when we come, we gather to worship him. And often... I think uh, some of us might be in danger or might be in trouble of being a little bit like those monsters that are invading and making the Lord's Day, the Lord's worship, all about, all about ourselves instead of like him. Um, sometimes that's a, that's a big problem that we might have. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, some of these ways in which we might be uh, not worshiping God in the manner that is, that is well-pleasing to him and the, and the ways that we can try to fix some of these problems that we might be facing. Um, so just to start off, let's, let's turn to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24 specifically. Um, John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and and in truth. In this passage, Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman at the well. Um, it's, it's a long passage, takes up the entire chapter, and it's lengthy, so we're not going to read the whole thing. But the context here is very uh, simple. There's, a, there's this lady who is essentially um, lost in sin. Uh, we understand, based on the conversation, that um, although she wants to worship, she is not someone who worships in spirit or someone who wor worships in truth. And so Jesus is going to be speaking to her specifically about worship. Um, and he makes this very, simple, um, this very simple idea that we are to worship in spirit and in truth. So we have the two ideas, worshiping in truth, worshiping in spirit. Uh, worshiping in truth uh, is this idea of worshiping in the correct way. Uh, that is, doing the things that God wants us to do in worship and not doing things that we're not called to do. And for the Samaritan woman, we're going to be we're going to learn based on what we read in the rest of the passage. She is not worshiping in truth at all. Uh, she asks about the, how the Samaritans um, and how they go up to the mountains to worship God instead of going to Jerusalem to God's temple as they are supposed to. And uh, the, the point there is that they're not worshiping in truth. They're worshiping in the wrong way, going to the wrong places to worship God. It's an Old Testament context, but the idea is they are not worshiping in truth because they're not worshiping as God had commanded, as God had expected them to worship. And so this, uh, the um, Samaritan lady here is not worshiping in truth because she's not worshiping as God wants her to worship. And then secondly, we find that we are called to worship in spirit. And to worship in spirit is to worship in a way in which your spirit is aligned with the spirit of God. To worship in a way in which your spirit is aligned with God's spirit. And what we're going to find is the Samaritan woman She's not worshiping in spirit either. Her spirit is not aligned with God's spirit in this time. Uh, Jesus is going to talk to her and she's going to reveal that um, 
She is, she is currently living in a sinful situation in which she is living with a man who is not her husband. And so she's, she's living in sin. Her worship is not acceptable because her spirit is not in line with God's spirit. Living in a sinful situation has separated her from that. So we find this example of somebody who does not worship in spirit and does not worship in truth completely contradictory to what God is calling us to be. We are to worship in spirit. We are to worship in truth. Um, both our acts of worship and our spirit when we worship need to be aligned with God's expectations when we come to worship. That's what we learned from this passage. A uh, second passage to consider is Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. This passage, uh, it, it reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not perform many miracles in your name? But I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Here we have a second group of people. And consider who these people are. These are faithful people. These are people that thought they were doing everything according to God's will. And they have some evidence to back that up, or at least what they thought was evidence to back that up. They're casting out demons and performing miracles. They are, um, they are prophesying in the name of the Lord. And yet, they're doing all of this in vain. Um, even though they are doing acts in which they think that they are justified, in which they think are right, because they are not right with God, because they practice lawlessness, because they are not right in the eyes of God, their, their worship is in vain. And this brings out a second truth about our worship and about what it means maybe to not be right in our worship. And that is, it doesn't matter if you're doing the right things. If you are not right with God in the beginning, your, your worship's also in vain. Um, and that, that's what these guys are. Even though these guys thought that they were doing according to God's will, they, they weren't. Um, and they're going to be condemned for it, essentially. So that's a warning for us and something that we can learn from. Um, our worship, we have to be right with God for our worship to be pleasing to him. A third passage is Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 and 29. Therefore, since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This speaks about how there is an acceptable way to worship God, and that is worship with reverence, worship with awe, worship with gratitude. And, and this passage points to a, a secondary truth, which is if there is an acceptable way to worship God, then there is an unacceptable way to worship God as well. If our attitudes in worship are, are with no reverence, with no awe, with no gratitude, with no worship for him, our, our worship's in vain. That's an unacceptable worship to God. Um, and so it's possible to do all the acceptable acts of worship, to worship in truth, and still not to be, to be right in our worship. Uh, we take all of this and we learn a couple of things about God's expectation for us when we come together to worship him. First of all, it's possible to worship not in truth. And if you are not worshiping in truth, then you're not worshiping in a way that is pleasing to him. If we are worshiping in however ways that we want, that's completely contrary or maybe even just not matching God's expectations for us in worship, that's not worshiping in truth. And that's not an acceptable worship. We, we learn that um, we might not be worshiping in the spirit. We could be doing everything correctly, but if we're not worshiping with a spirit that is matching God's spirit, that's not a pleasing and acceptable worship to God. And we learn the big warning, which is even if we think that we are worshiping correctly, that we are worshiping in a way that is pleasing to God, it's possible we might, we might not be. Uh, in the Matthew passage, those men were doing things that they thought proved their, that God accepted them. And, and they weren't. Their acts of service and acts of worship weren't. So we have these great big warnings. These, these warnings telling us about some of the um, great importance of what it means to worship God and why we have to worship God correctly. And so I, I think this begs the question, and the purpose of the rest of this sermon today is um, answering some of these, these potential problems with our worship. What are some of the things that we might be doing in our worship 
that could be causing God to be less than pleased with us? What could we possibly change in order to become more pleasing to God in our worship? And so we're going to kind of talk about some problems that we might be facing as we worship him. And then addressing some solutions to these problems that hopefully, so hopefully we can fix ourselves and fix any problems we might have in order to be well-pleasing to God in order to have a better worship for him. Um, and so there could be plenty of problems getting in the way. In John 4, we read about the Samaritan woman who was living in sin, and that was a problem getting in the way of her worship. Um, she didn't worship in spirit or truth. Um, even from the very beginning, if you go back to Genesis chapter 4, uh, when you look at the, the, story of the, the, the story of Cain and Abel, um, and you compare it to Hebrews 11, we read that um, through faith, Abel gave a better sacrifice than Cain. So we know that based on that, uh, both of them knew what they were supposed to do in order to give a sacrifice to God. Their worship to God at that time was to give a sacrifice to him. And yet, Abel was able to give a pleasing sacrifice to God, and Cain was not. They both knew what to do, yet even from the beginning, problems with worship led to greater problems and led to God considering one to be righteous and one to not be righteous. So it's, it's a, it, let's consider some of these problems in our worship. Uh, first one to consider when we consider common problems with our worship, might be simply that the worship of the lost is unacceptable to God. We read that in the Matthew passage, in Matthew chapter 7. Um, again, we talked about these guys, and they thought that they were good. They thought that the acts that they were doing, that the worship that they presented were, was good with God, and they considered themselves to be good. Um, and they were good acts, weren't they? They prophesied in the name of the Lord, they cast out demons, they performed miracles. Those are good, righteous things to be doing. Those are, those are potentially even acts of worship that would be pleasing and welcomed by God. And yet, they aren't right with God. Even though what they do and what they did was pleasing to God, because they were not right with God themselves, it's not considered acceptable. Um, and so that's kind of the problem we face also. Um, If we are lost and not given over to God, no matter what we do, even if we, do, if, even if we worship in the correct ways, maybe even in the correct, uh, with the correct mindset, purposely worshiping God, it's not something that he considers to be acceptable because we need to be acceptable before him to present him with an acceptable worship. And so the solution to this is pretty simple. Um, submit to God's will for your life, repent, be baptized, and be accepted into him first then your worship will be acceptable and pleasing to him. Get your life right, turn yourself over to God, and then your worship is pleasing. We read in uh, Acts, Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If we want to be worshiping in spirit and in truth, both, we have to give ourselves over to God. And that's a very simple step, and it's a very simple barrier that gets in the way of our worship to him. If you are not... Um, one with God, if you have not been baptized into him, into becoming acceptable in the first place, then your worship by that, that transitive relationship is also, not please, is also not pleasing to him. So, a very simple truth. Um, once you are saved, then your worship can be pleasing to him. If you are not saved, your worship isn't pleasing. So, become saved. Make sure your worship is acceptable. A second problem might be hypocritical worship. Um, this is pretty similar to, I think, what the Samaritan woman was doing. Worship that she thought might have been acceptable, except she was, she was living in sin. She was living with a man who she was not allowed to be living with, not her husband. And so, maybe she was worshiping, and we know she wasn't worshiping in truth either, but maybe she was worshiping and she was sincere in her worship. But the, hip the hypocrisy of her living in a sinful situation separated her spirit from the spirit of God, and that's not an acceptable worship. Uh, Jesus also talks to the Pharisees about this a lot. There's many times throughout the Gospels in which Jesus criticizes the Pharisees for their hypocrisy in that they claim to do the Lord's will. And maybe they even do it, but their hearts are far from them. Their hearts had separated themselves from the Spirit of God, and their worship was not acceptable. Um, and so maybe some of us, as we enter into a time of worship, are also living in hypocrisy 
living with sin in our lives that separates us from God and makes our worship to him not pleasing. That's that, that um, living in sin, not having sinned, but living in sin. Um, living active lives of hypocrisy. And so the, the, the solution here is also relatively straightforward and relatively simple. And I think most of us hopefully have done this. But you, the, the solution is to get rid of the sin out of your life. Repent, turn away from your sin, find forgiveness, and then the Lord will find your worship acceptable and pleasing to him once again. But you can't live an active lifestyle, living in sin, and worship God in a way that is pleasing to him. You have to remove the sin from your life first and then turn to God. Um, so that's the solution. Uh, repent and confess of your sin. Turn away from it. Um, if you go look at John chapter, or not John, 1 John. Look at 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through, 5 through 10. This is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light, and in him, in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and yet we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. Yet if we say, if we, say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, then we are a liar and his word is not in us. This is that perfect illustration, this perfect demonstration of the greater point. Um, consider verse 6, that, that idea of walking in darkness. If you are walking in darkness, you have no fellowship with him. Again, that's not having committed a sin. But that is walking in a lifestyle of sin. Walking in a lifestyle that is completely separate from, separate from the life of God. And if you're separate from the life of God, from the light of God, your worship is not acceptable and pleasing to him. So the solution is also simple. Look at verse 9. Um, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and cleanse us of our unrighteousness. If you are walking in sin, your worship is not acceptable to him. But the solution is simple and the solution is easy. Repent from your sin, turn back to him, he will forgive you, and your worship will once again be well-pleasing to God. Now, that's the second problem that we have to consider. Is your worship hypocritical because of the life that you are living? A third problem. A third problem might be, is your worship, does your worship originate from God, or does your worship originate from men? Uh, Matthew 15. Matthew 15, 7 through 9. And this is Jesus speaking to the, to the Pharisees and the scribes once again. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy to you, this people honor me with their lips, but their hearts, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Uh, Jesus is a little bit brutal here. He's uh, quoting Isaiah, but the idea is very simple. This is Jesus talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees who have... Um, laid out additional laws on the people. They have brought in their own traditions and included their traditions, the precepts of men, in the law or in what you have to do in order to be pleasing to God. They have included their own, uh, their own laws, their, their laws which originate from themselves and made them to be the laws of God. They've added things to worship is essentially what they've done. And what Jesus calls them is, in vain do they worship me, teaching his doctrines to the precepts of men. The precepts of men are vain, is what we learn. So that begs the question, are we uh, worshiping according to God's truth, or have we added to worship? Are we doing things outside of what God wanted, or adding things to worship outside of God's will? If we are, uh, that is vain worship. It's not pleasing and acceptable to him. Um... And so, in order to, for true worship, we have to worship according to God's truth and not according to the truth of men. And the solution to this is also very simple, uh, similar to the John, John 4 passage. It's to worship in truth. Worship according to God's truth, not according to the truth of men. Um, if you're worshiping in a way that's adding based on your own preconceptions and your own wants and your own thoughts, that's not according to God's will. Worship according to the ways that God has told us to worship. And we, we get the ideas of the acts of worship, to, to sing praises to him, to pray to him, 
uh, to, to listen to him, to, to read his word publicly. We understand what he wants us to do in worship. Don't add to that and don't take away from that. Trust God. Worship God as he wants us to. Don't worship in the ways that we want to. Um, we are to worship God in truth according to his expectations. We go to him for instruction. We don't go to ourselves for instruction to worship. And so we have this, this understanding that worship is to originate from God, not from us. Another problem might be checklist worship. Checklist worship. I think if I were going to point fingers, this is the one I struggle with. And so I'd imagine this might be the one other people struggle with. Uh, look at Micah. Let's go to the Old Testament. Look at Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, um, is, is really this, this almost sarcastic uh, passage in which it's the people of Israel talking to God, saying, these are the things we're doing. Um, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings, with yearling calves? Does the Lord take delight in thousands of rams and ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn for my rebellious acts or the fruits of my body for the sins of my soul? It's a very sarcastic list. It's the people of Israel saying, look, we're going to do the things you want, so we're right with you, right? It's, it's them making a checklist in some ways. And so I, I think we have to ask the question, is God pleased with this? And are we guilty of this? Um, and so their checklist is full of things that they are expected to do. They're supposed to bow before the Lord. They are. And they're supposed to give their yearly sacrifice for the forgiveness of their sins. That is how Old Testament worship worked. So their list isn't completely off base. Their list includes the things, in part, that they are supposed to be doing. But the list is not what is expected for them. Look at verse 8. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with the Lord. So, first of all, consider, what does our checklist look like? Do, do we come to worship on a Sunday morning, sit down and think, okay, there's the songs, check. All right, we said two prayers, so that's two checks. And, and we got through the Lord's Supper, so that's a check, and now the sermon's over, check, and I'm good. How often is that how we treat worship? Is that a checklist version of worship? And is that what is expected? And is that what God wants from us? According to verse 8, I don't think so. God requires our hearts. God wants us to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with him. It's not a checklist. It's a matter of the heart. God is not pleased with a checks, checklist mindset because it takes us away from the purpose of worship. The purpose of worship is to worship him. Not to check things off a list in order to make him think that we are right with him. And so change your way of thinking. Worship of God is not a checklist. Worship to God is a mindset. Um, it's a continual, unending mindset of, of serving God, of loving God, of worshiping him. When we worship, worship him. Don't check off lists. God doesn't want a mindset of marking off a checklist. He wants our hearts to be focused on loving him and on serving him. So are, are you worshiping with a checks, checklist mindset? Work to remember who God is and what God has done for you. Worship God. Don't check off a list. We're going to look at one final idea, one final problem with our worship. And I'm sure there are others. I'm sure if we were to make an expansive list, we could probably come up with other problems or things that might get in the way of our worship. But here's one last one that might be a little bit more encompassing. This idea uh, that worship is all about me. This all about me attitude when we come to worship. Um, it's a very modern, it is a very popular modern thinking mindset, but it's not old, like it's not new by any means. The idea of Worship is about me has been around for, for centuries, if not longer. And it's this very simple idea. Um, how many people come into worship and think, or, or leave worship saying, I didn't get anything out of church this day, today. Just didn't get anything out of it. Or, or what, how many people have thought, I don't like it when he leads singing. I prefer it when the other guy leads singing. I think he does a better job, and I enjoy it more when he leads singing. How many of you thought something like, you know, that worship, that worship would be a lot more uh, entertaining if we added a smoke machine and some lights and some instruments. And you see where I'm getting? 
When we make worship about us, we completely lose our focus on the true purpose of worship. Uh, we, no long, we, we're, we are at risk of no longer worshiping in truth. We are at risk of no longer worshiping in spirit. Um, and the solution is very simple. Change your mindset. Again, you want your heart to be focused on service to him. Uh, consider Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh, present your body a holy and living sacrifice acceptable to God. That is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but transform yourself, renewing your mind to focus on him. Very simple idea. Why, as a Christian, we are called not to do what we want to do, but to do what he wants us to do. And that includes our worship. Our worship is to, is to be according to his will, not according to our whims. Um, and so there, there is a purpose of worship in order to edify one another. Worship isn't completely only for God. A big portion of, of worship is to edify one another. But we cannot allow that idea that we have to gain something out of worship to, to override or overshadow the true purpose, which is worshiping God. Don't allow yourself to get in the way. And so what's the solution to this? Well, it's change your thinking. Stop going to church and, stop and start coming to worship. Um, if you are living a life a living, as a living sacrifice dedicated to God, then why are you complaining about worship not being personally fulfilling? You're here to worship him, not to be entertained. And so it's not about you. It's about God. That's what we're going to learn. If we had to sum everything up, worship is not about me. It's about him. So we've learned plenty of things about worship, right? We've learned about how... Um, some of the reasons why our worship might not be pleasing to him. If we are not saved, if we are not living, if we have not been baptized into him, then our worship is not acceptable to him. If we are living in sin, if we are completely separated, by, separated from him by the lifestyle we are living, our worship isn't pleasing to him. Um, and we've also found plenty of ways that our worship might be lacking. If we are substituting um, our worship according to his truth, for, for man's truth, if we are substituting other ideas into our worship, it might not be acceptable to God. If we are filling out a checklist instead of worshiping God, that might not be acceptable to him. And if we are more focused on our own wants and desires when we come to worship, we might, we might not be worshiping him in a manner that is well-pleasing to him. We are called to worship God in a manner that is pleasing to him in spirit and in truth, we're to worship with in awe and in reverence. Don't lose sight of who we worship. And don't make worship about you, because it is about him instead. And so, as, as we conclude tonight, our goal when leaving here should be to have worshipped God in a manner that is pleasing to him. Um, to worship God in an, an acceptable way, in reverence and in awe. And so, to offer this, and, and too often I feel like I've come to worship and I... I I'm a checklist guy. That, that's my temptation, and I'm sure that might be the temptation for others. Too often I come to church and I come to worship um, with the wrong attitude and with the wrong perspective in mind. That's what we learned today. If we want to worship God in a manner that is well-pleasing to him, worship him in a way that is pleasing to him. Make him the focus of our worship, not ourselves. So does God find your worship acceptable? Um, Maybe he sees you as, as lukewarm. Maybe he sees you as um, not converted. Maybe he sees you as somebody whose sin is getting in the way of proper worship. And if that's the case, we can change that this morning. If God is not pleased with your worship because you are not right with God, we can help you. You can come right now and, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and find meaningful and pleasing worship to him. If, if you are struggling with sin in your life, and you want, to help, you, you want help getting rid of that, you can come right now, get the prayers and the strength of the church, find repentance and find uh, power and confession, and you can have that sin removed from your life by God, and your worship will once again be pleasing to him. And maybe it's just a simple mindset change. You know, Maybe you have been a little bit too focused on self instead of focused on him. That's something you can change on your own right now. Change your mind, focus on God, and worship him. If you have any need for any of these things, uh, then now's, now's a great opportunity. Uh, now's your chance as you, as you come forward, as we stand and as we sing.